Hello everyone, I'm 100% me and this here is my good friend Wood and I'd very much like to welcome you back into my world where we're doing something a little bit different today. You know what I'm really missing? I don't, I don't remember how I did that again, something like that. I'm kind of liking this. Here it goes. Oh, I okay, I messed it up. Don't talk while trying to do music. You know, music is kind of a big passion of mine. It's just in all my, what, 10 plus years of playing Minecraft, I've never really touched the note blocks. Note blocks are really very tricky to work with. Not to mention, very, very time consuming. Just setting up that over there at the top. Yeah, that took me way more time than I care to admit. But the very simple fact that some things just are tricky doesn't mean they should be avoided, right? And I've been avoiding these things for 10 plus years. And so what I'd like to do at the start of this episode here is just mess around with them a little bit, see if we can come up with something cool. Now, obviously, what I've tried to recreate here is my intro music for this series. Music that I've made myself, by the way. However, this isn't quite an accurate representation of my music. You see, um, the intro music is a blues, which this is kind of not. Now, using this wool over here, I've tried to visualize what a blues looks like. Every color represents a chord and every block of wool represents a bar. This is a 12 bar blues. Let us walk you through it. Starting over here at the start, you've got four bars of your very first chord of your key. Now we are currently playing in the key of C, making C the first chord. Then you play two bars of the fourth chord, which in our case is an F. Then you play two more bars of your first chord. And this, as you can see, is where it gets spicy. This is where you play one bar of your fifth chord, which in our case is a G. Then you go back to one bar of your fourth chord, and then you finish off by playing two bars of your first chord again. Now right here, I've got a system repeating the first chord over and over and over again, and that's not really what I want, right? I'd like to make this a system that switches chords and makes this a proper blues, just like I've illustrated over there. Now I've got no idea on how to do that yet, but we've got all of this space for it. Alright, so I've been thinking about this problem for a little bit. The way that I see it, there are two ways of tackling it. Because the problem is really simple, we need to repeat this four times, then that two times, then this one two times again, then that, then that, and then this one again. The easy way to fix it is to have just a really, 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 really long string of a lot, a lot, a lot of note blocks going um, through the 12 bar um, blues, one by one. That is terribly inefficient. The other way I figure we can solve this is to view all of these as separate modules that we can automate with redstone to activate at the right times. The problem with doing it that way is that it's really very tricky and difficult. I'm not quite sure I have those redstone skills in me, but we'll figure it out. Or at the very least try, won't we, Wood? We will probably need a really big open space. It's somewhat flat. I mean, this is all kind of flat, but you know what? Let's just um, try starting over here. So I have been scratching my head a little bit about how to do this. And then I remembered a couple of years ago, I saw a, a video in which the incredible Etho actually kind of came up with the solution that we need. Now, I don't remember exactly how he did it, but I do remember the basic concept. So I'm going to Try and recreate what he did from memory. I mean, I could very well look up how he did it exactly, but what's the fun in that? Essentially, what Etho did is he used items to figure out exactly when the note block should fire. In what order, that is. Because, as you can see, if I take a stackable item, the comparator will detect that and give an output of 1. Whereas, if I take a non-stackable item, it will give an output of signal 3. You see, it won't go further than this. And this is really all we need. And now essentially we can detect exactly when the items come through and so when to activate the note blocks. To demonstrate, I've put a whole bunch of extras in so that you can see better. If I flick this lever, you can see that that was the shovel over there. And the rest of them was just sticks and planks. And everything is now neatly in here, still in order, which is also important. And that's essentially basically how we are going to program our note blocks. Now what we want, of course, is a system that resets itself, right? And so we're going to cycle all the items through. Otherwise, we'd have to manually reprogram the whole thing every single time we use it. That's terribly annoying. So I've come up with this system over here. We've got all of these. 
And if I flick this lever, lever a couple of times, then they all end up over here in the buffer chest. You may notice they are still in order, which is very important. And then we can just unload them back into the chest and start over again. I think that's a fairly alright system. Now you may notice this dropper fader over here is a little bit of a strange design. And that's because this one is supposed to be quiet. We don't really want the clicking noises, right, of the droppers when we're playing music. But you may notice that the first time it does click, which is kind of annoying, but we'll deal with that later. That scared me. Oh, now of course we don't want to keep manually... Hello. Now of course we don't want to have to keep manually flicking this switch over here, right? We kind of want to automate that, and so we need to start building a timer. Let's have a look, something like this should do. And I've also hooked it up to the system already. And we should see all the items coming in, in order. There they are. I think that's good. You may also notice I've already programmed this one, just as an experiment to see what it would do. As you can see, first four bars we get something played, then two bars nothing, two bars selling played, two bars nothing, and then two bars selling played. So let's see if we get something going here. That's not working. Oh, I know why that's not working. Need to reset it first, of course. There we go, now it should work. And instantly we've got a problem. And I know exactly what the problem is. Let me try and explain this one a little bit. You see, there are several shuffles going through here right now. Only because they're the same shuffle, it doesn't change the signal over here. And so it doesn't really pulse, which it's supposed to do. I'm not quite sure I've explained it right. But the short version is we need to find a way to create more pulses through there. It shouldn't be too hard, we're already creating pulses over here. Alright, so here's kind of my solution to the problem. Let's see if it works. Oh yeah, it works. I think. And now we should have a couple of non-thingies. Yes, and now it should pulse again twice. And it should not pulse again. And it should pulse again twice. There you go, that should be it. So let's go build the other module, shall we? Alright, as you can see, I've now put all the other modules in. I've also programmed them. I am genuinely not sure if this will work. I might have made a mistake somewhere, but I suppose the only way to find out if it works is to, you know, find out if it works. So let's go. Okay, yeah, that's not... Exactly. Okay, that sort of went alright, and I think it only the only reason it went wrong is because I because I, they kind of have to go through once. I think what I'm trying to say is this should work now, even though I haven't really changed anything. And there you go! That's it! That's the thing, that's the system! It's working! Now it is kind of annoying that I have to manually reset everything and then check to make double sure that it all works, it's all there. For now though it appears to be fine. Now I need to make a system that makes the whole process automatic. I just want to hit one button, have it play and have it reset itself automatically. That's what I want. So let's go work on that now. And I think for this I'll be wanting to use an etho hopper clock. Uh, oh, we have just about enough resources I see. Just barely. Let's see if I even remember how to do this. Now you may notice that this is a very etho heavy episode, isn't it? Now one of them needs the redstone block. I do not know which. Well, I think I did something right, that worked. One of these needs a button on it. I think that's about right. Now let's go see if this works. It seems to work! Hey, look at that! We did a thing! Now, looking at these hoppers... 
That kind of has me worried. There's an item in already. Does it mean it will activate again? I did not hit anything. I don't know why that just triggered. And that's also wrong. Yeah, okay. There's a lot going wrong here that I do not understand. Hmm. Why did that trigger on its own? I mean, there must be a reason. I'm pretty sure I didn't hit the button. Wait, I'm going to have to check the footage. Did I hit the button accidentally? Hmm. No. No, I did not. So, there's a bunch of things going wrong here. For some reason, these trigger an extra time when they're not supposed to. Oh, the order is also messed up, which is also not supposed to happen. Now, there is one very simple way to fix this, and that is by putting a piece of dirt in there somewhere. It's just an extra item that won't really do anything, won't play, but it will be a little bit of a buffer in the system. And that should, I think, prevent that from happening again. So let's go try that. Something went wrong there already. Yeah, something is wrong. Alright, so I've been debugging this for a little bit. The piece of dirt does seem to work. It's just that the timing up here, it messed up the order and so the programming of these modules. So putting some extra delay on here seemed to have worked. So let's go see if it works now. I think it does. There you go, it works, it works, we got something, it works! Oh, that makes me so happy! That makes me genuinely happy! Now really all we need to finish this is... Uh, there, and there. We need of course drums. Wow, okay, that's not very in sync, is it? There you go, this is much better. Now, as you can see, we've got an entire working, functioning system, which is really cool. That's what I wanted. Does it have some flaws? Oh, yes, definitely. This whole thing will work only once and then you have to wait for it to reset, which is kind of annoying. But it is completely programmable, which is what I wanted, which is really cool, I think. And I guess if I were to work some more on this contraption, I could work out all of its kinks. Um, right now, I'm not going to though, whoops, because as I was working on this, I had a realization. You see the thing with these note blocks though, as I've said at the start of the video, I've never really touched them much, never really done anything with them. If you look at what other people are doing with them, it's somewhat similar to what I've done over there, is you make a contraption that makes the song for you, right? Ooh, I'm short a couple. But having messed with them a little bit, I think they have a lot more potential than that. Let me just tune them real quick. You see, you can use these note blocks to just create your own instrument out of nowhere. I mean, it's a bit tricky to navigate, but it's perfect. It's in the end, it's perfectly doable. It's a little bit of practice. You can make a whole skill with these things. I don't know. I'd like to spend some time seeing if I can make an instrument that I can actually play with the very limited controls of Minecraft and note blocks. You can really only use them if you point at them and click them. So over here I've set up a classical piano, right? With all the note blocks set to all the notes you can make in Minecraft. With note blocks. These are all the notes you can make. Start with an F sharp over here, a G, G sharp, and so on and so forth. And it ends over here with an F sharp. The thing about this, this is impossible to use, really. You can never really get to the ends. You have to walk really quite far. I've sort of tried doing uh, my own thing. Uh, the, here it goes. Nope. Wait. Nope. Nope. There you go. I did it. I did it. But as you can see, it's kind of tricky to navigate this, isn't it? Right? So what I sort of figure you want to do is just have a set of no blocks set to a certain skill that you want to play in. So I've got C over here. And because I had some space left, I've got G over here. 
I'm not quite sure what that's going to do, but I sort of figure you can combine the two somewhat okay. So let's put some wool over here, which apparently makes a guitar sound. And let's make some epic guitar riffs, shall we? Oh, it's more of an acoustic guitar then. Okay, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. We can work with that. Hmm. There, sort of. <laughs> All right, okay, okay, okay. I don't think this is the way to do it. Hey, I did it, I did it, I, I did it. That's what I wanted to do. But as you can see, it's really quite tricky. It's near impossible in Minecraft. I mean, there's gotta be a way in Minecraft to make an instrument that doesn't really require any spinning and not really require a lot of running around. Uh, let's go try and find it. I'm out of note blocks again. Now what I wonder, do these observers, well not if you place it that way, do they detect when you play a note? No, they don't. Okay, they do detect it when you change a note. I don't really see how that could be useful. Maybe we can make it a little bit like a harmonica, where you have to blow in and out, of course, to make different sounds. But we can do it up and down. And perhaps that works. All right, so we've got this now. Only this is not how a harmonica does. For some reason, when you do a harmonica, you have to do like this, like you blow out, in, out, in, out, in, but then in and out again. It's kind of weird. But since we were going with harmonica feel, let's do it that way. I think that's how that works in the harmonica. Can we make music just a little bit easier on this than on any of those? Let's go have a C. I have no idea what I'm doing. Okay, yeah, mm -hmm. okay, I sort of got that to work. What do you think, Wood? Was that good? You get 10 bonus points if you know what song that was. Leave your guess in the comments below. This is kind of nice. Whoa, whoa, what's that? Oh, come on. Wood, do you feel that? Oh, it's gone. Did you feel that? It's another earthquake. Why do those earthquakes keep happening? I'm just trying to farm my crops. I'm just a peaceful wheat farmer. Ooh, one is getting away. It's so strange. Anyway, uh, here's a hint. I made them all sound like a banjo now. There you go. I think it might be easier actually if I move these down a bit. They don't have to move around so much. It does raise a question. If I move these with a the piston... I don't think they can be moved with a piston actually. They can be moved? <gasps> That's new! I mean, it's gotta be new. I've always used note blocks as a non-movable block. There you go, maybe this is easier. Oh, this is much easier. Ooh, okay, gotta hit it. Okay, I think this might be the setup. This seems really nice. You've got a whole skill over here. If you want more notes, you can maybe add them to the site here. I'm not sure if that's really the best way of going about it, but eh. Yeah, okay, I think there is a lot of potential here with these note blocks. A lot of potential that I didn't really see before. And I do kind of like the idea of being able to sort of make your own instrument like this, right? It's just that that will require a lot of practice to get used to it. In fact, there's not any instrument that I play that I play by moving my mouse cursor up and down. Right? Now speaking about moving your cursor up and down, I've now put it like this. Because that's how a, a harmonica works, right? I think. But wouldn't it be easier if you did it that you played like this? It's, it's a very similar setup, just a little bit different. Let's go try that. I don't know, maybe this is a little bit easy to work with. Oh, this is weird. This is weird. Ah! Oh, 
Oh, I don't have no slower than that. Okay, I don't, I'm not sure if this is the way to go, but that seems a little bit easier. Now, finally, to finish things off, there's one more way that I could think of to make music with node blocks. And that's the combination of automating it with redstone over there and doing it manually, making your own instrument over there. As you can see, I've got a whole bunch of node blocks set up over here and they're automated with redstone, but you play them manually by hitting the buttons. And this way is kind of cool because you can do a whole bunch of nodes without having to move your mouse around a whole lot. But it's also kind of limited because you can really only set up one song at a time. I've got over here the music disc Other Side from Lena Rain, which I've expressed in the past is one of my favorite music discs in Minecraft. And I've sort of programmed these to play that song. Oh, okay, I missed the one laugh. I missed the last bit. No. Now, if you're familiar with this song and you have really keen hearing, you may have noticed that everything is transposed half a note up. And that's just one of those weird and quirky Minecraft note blocks things, right? As you can see over there, you don't really have a very big range. So I've had to transpose everything up just a little bit. Just scoot it on over. But with all that being said, done and built, this is the end of today's very musical episode. It was a bit of a weird one. I did not think to spend the entire episode with node blocks. Whoop. Node blocks used to be something I avoided, I think, having messed with them for a little bit. I think I might just pick them up a little bit quicker than I ever would. I really don't think they're all that bad. What about you? Would you pick them up a little bit sooner now that you've seen me mess with them a little bit? They're really not that difficult, just very time consuming. Let me know what you think in the comments. I hope you've enjoyed this episode, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye! I think it still doesn't quite work.